right, welcome back everyone. So in an effort to put some kind of content together, given the weather outside, I've been going back, looking through archive footage and recently re-found footage that I had on old uh, SD cards. And I found footage from the last day of my Colorado multi-day motorcycle trip this past July. Uh, basically just the ride out of Silverton heading back home. And the reason why I never published that last day, I mean, I was, I was right on schedule publishing a video almost every day for the entire trip. And the reason why I never published that last day is because little did I know while I was recording that footage, I was actually sick with COVID and didn't even know it. Uh, I picked it up from just interacting with all those people during the Hard Rock foot race that I was there um, working and volunteering at. And, you know, I'm talking my way through this video and you see all this beautiful scenery as I'm leaving Silverton heading to Durango. And I ended up stopping to get gas right outside of Durango. And, and at that stop, I kind of felt a little off. And so I didn't record any footage after that. And I would have probably fired the camera back up sometime in Arizona, you know, near Four Corners, getting some pretty footage. But basically from that point on, uh, I went downhill ridiculously fast. And so that's why I never published the footage because basically it was a struggle to get home. I had to stop so many times just cause I was like, fever dreaming while riding. It was really bad. It was horribly unsafe. And of course I had to get gas and so I couldn't interact with anyone because I was contagious. I, I made it home, parked the bike, didn't even take any of my gear off the bike, collapsed on the garage floor, uh, finally like crawled my way up into this spare bedroom that I'm sitting in right now and uh, basically didn't leave this room for an entire week. So I finally put that footage together and stitched it all up and that's what you're about to see. And again, at the end of the video, the last thing you'll see is just me stopping to get gas. And you mightn't even notice, I have a look on my face where I'm kind of like, something's not quite right. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit off or something. And it's just funny because after that moment, I turned the camera off and I never turned it on again in the entire ride back to Arizona because I just had to put all of my energy into just uh, staying upright. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes I do really stupid things. So anyway, I hope you enjoy. Take care, be safe. I got a whole bunch of other videos that I've, I'm queuing up and will publish soon, so. All right, everyone, it is Sunday afternoon. The Hard Rock 100 has come to a glorious end. And let me tell you guys, it was a very special year. And I think honestly, it was even more special than last year for so many reasons. Uh, first of all, we had two new course records uh, on, uh, during the event. We had some very powerful stories of people pushing through. Uh, we had one guy finish with about a minute left in the cutoff. You know, a minute short of 48 hours, and I actually got to run in with him uh, at the end. I like ran up the road to get him to try and convince him to run faster so he wouldn't miss the cutoff. And so I got to run in with him. That was really fun. And uh, yeah, I had the best, absolute best volunteers this year that I have ever had doing this. Um, this service and I've done this particular job four times now I've been the aid station captain for four different years um, which also reminds me that this was my five-year volunteer service um, award year so I got special recognition for five years of service and uh, yeah hopefully hopefully fingers crossed uh, next year will be again a lucky year for me I have a pretty decent chance with all of my tickets now accrued um, to, to possibly get in next year. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that and I'll certainly 
keep you guys all in on the loop when lottery day comes, which is always the first week of December. And now we're here riding outside of town, heading towards Durango, weaving around at 10,000 feet to the San Juans on our way to what will be a motel for the night. I have decided that I do not want to try and drive all the way to Flagstaff tonight like I did last year. That was really stupid. I could have gotten seriously hurt. Uh, I can already tell right now that my judgment is impaired. I am sleep deprived. Um, in many ways, getting stuck behind this camper van is probably a good thing for me. It's forcing me to go slow and not be stupid. I just want to get to the hotel safe and sound tonight, which is uh, in uh, the town of Cortez, which is only about a 95 mile ride from Silverton. So a very short day, but also as you can see, there's a lot of clouds starting to billow and form. And so I would prefer to get in and get comfortable and get some rest before dealing with any sort of afternoon uh, monsoon rains. So I think this is all gonna work out and then I can get up bright and early, uh, 6 a.m. tomorrow and bang out the rest of the ride before the monsoons come in before lunchtime. So that's the plan. So some stats on the ride so far. I have put uh, 1,013 miles on the bike since I left the house uh, last week. So we've put 1,000 miles. We are at 8,093 on the total odometer now. And by the time we get home, it'll be about 8,400 or so. So we're definitely gonna be putting a, a fair number of miles on the bike. I think in addition to the handlebars, one of the things that I'm gonna need to upgrade on the bike uh, and replace just from general wear and tear is the uh, chain. I think the chain is starting to get a little worn here at 8,000 miles. And so I'll need to get a new chain and new sprockets um, and get those installed. All right, we're starting to get close to uh, Purgatory here and, and uh, Durango because uh, we're getting into the ski resorts. All right, I'm waiting for that. Uh, any minute now, my, my fuel reserve is gonna come on. I know it. There it is, right there. Man, I called that exactly. So now that we've reflected on the hard rock race run, uh, maybe it's a good time to reflect on the trip as a whole, on the motorcycle part of it, and the adventure touring part of it, and just kind of my thoughts. I think um, I, I really scored on day one, in a way, by having that uh, Monument Valley Park be closed, because then we got to explore, you know, the, the Mogi Dugway, and we got to just explore lots of cool things that I hadn't originally planned. Mexican Hat, uh, the Goosenecks, uh, Muley points, just, yeah, cool stuff. So on day two, I went up to Moab and did a loop around Canyonlands and in that general vicinity and definitely had some good and bad experiences uh, on that part of the adventure. I uh, got to explore some really cool parts near Canyonlands, went up the, the um, Schaefer Trail, which was amazing. Uh, but then I also had that, you know, that drop trying to go up the the, the first trail of the day and uh, it did not uh, it did not end well <laughs> I had a lot of trouble getting the bike picked up and just you know I hate dropping it I dented the pannier pretty good so that was a pain um, but I, I didn't let it dampen my spirits too much and I did move on to have that amazing experience in, in, in Canyon lands and got to deal with some sand which was a little stressful but didn't have any drops there and uh, nearly overheated, which was a little scary. Bike got super hot in, uh, in Canyonlands. Uh, and then had a nice pleasant ride uh, through the evening uh, up and over to, uh, to the Kepler Corner in, in central Colorado. And then from there, uh, day three, we went up and we hiked the 14ers uh, in the Elk Range. We did Castle and Conundrum, and that was probably about as good as I could have expected. Um, Got really lucky with weather. I didn't really get too too rained on. Um, I struggled a bit with the just the elevation gain and the, the altitude. I wasn't quite in shape for it, but I still had a blast, and uh, it, it just really went well. And then made it back to Kepler Corner without incident. And then came day four, infamous day four, where I decided to whimsically 
turn right out of Kepler Corner and hop up and down Kepler Pass. And the morning was going fantastic. And I was enjoying the scenery, just giddy as can be. And uh, just a mile from the summit, from, from the pass, uh, I popped a flat tire. And uh, that was it. Alright, they got a gas station here. Never pass up a gas station, right? Isn't that the rule? <laughs>